coming in at number 10, Super Smash TV. This is a game that I like more than my wife does, but she agrees to play it along with me and she has a lot of fun with it. It's a game show of the future where the two of you go through these arenas and shoot everything that comes through the doors. It plays a lot like Robotron. You can shoot in eight different directions using the four buttons on the Super NES controller. This is one of the most hectic games I've ever played. It's best if you keep two separate sides of the screen to avoid confusion. It's a game that I enjoy on my own, but it's even better when the other person is my wife. In case you haven't figured it out by now, this is the top 10 most enjoyable games that me and my wife play together. Me and my wife are very different from the other couples out there, so take this list as a grain of salt. Coming in at number nine is Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'm sure a lot of you have played a game in this franchise, and a lot of you have probably played this particular one. It's got great split screen support. It doesn't really feel like a game of skill since you can get blasted off the course from some special weapon from the last place person at any time, but it's very enjoyable to drive through these imaginative landscapes that they have as the courses. It's excellent in split screen. I'm glad that they're still releasing courses for this game. We're playing some of the new ones in this footage. Sometimes we try to take out our opponents together, but usually we're pretty competitive and we're not afraid to throw a banana peel at the other person involved. I just got done saying that me and my wife are different from other people, but I would believe that most husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends could play this split screen together and have a good time. Like my other top 10 lists, I'm going to mix in three honorable mentions in with the list, and I'm going to give you one of them right now. Seamen on the Dreamcast. It was my wife's idea to put this on the list because she really enjoyed playing through the game with me. We would uh, turn on the aquarium and feed the little pets and tickle them and talk to them and raise them. And we ended up playing through the entire game. It's such a bizarre game, and it's even more bizarre that Leonard Nimoy is the narrator, giving you tips and telling you what you need to do before each day at the aquarium. I just can't imagine him sitting in a sound booth saying some of the things that they had him say. Please use the heater to raise the temperature to a more comfortable level. It's a game where you can talk through a microphone on the Dreamcast, and sometimes they won't understand what you're saying, but other times they'll answer a direct question. It's very fun to see what they would respond to. So me and my wife, we would pass the microphone around and see uh, what we can get them to say. Of this glass. So let me inquire, are you a male or a female? Coming in at number eight is Life is Strange. This is an Xbox One game, and it was released on other systems as well. You basically play as this girl in this small town, and she's got a mystery to solve. That's the basis for a lot of video games, but this one is done very well. Sorry about yesterday. Yeah, I'm sorry you didn't do anything to help, but you're just like everybody else here. I can't really spoil anything, but there are some supernatural things going on. It's a great story and the graphical style is something that we really enjoyed. It's a cutscene driven drama, but there's also scenes where you're free to roam wherever you want. There's a lot of good actors that play the various parts of the game. It's not two player simultaneous per se, but we did take turns passing the controller around and we would also make suggestions on what we should have the main character do first. It's hard to describe this game, but it's very enjoyable. Coming in at number seven is a game that's very much like Life is Strange, but it's a little bit better and that is Detroit Become Human. The story in this game was very compelling for me. Without giving away too much, it's about an android rebellion. In this future society, these androids perform menial labor and they do the tasks that humans don't want to do anymore. They're mistreated and stuff, but they start to gain a consciousness. I'm okay, I'm not so cold. You look lost. We have nowhere to go. I know someone who can help you. Thank you. 
you play as two of those androids in this game, but you're also playing the other side that's trying to hunt down some of these androids. You make a lot of different choices that put you on a lot of different paths. And I will say the first time me and my wife played through this game together, we got the worst path imaginable. I was almost in tears by what happened to the characters that we played as. We ended up replaying to get a better ending, but just so you know, there's some very serious things that happen in this game. Needless to say, it's a very fun experience to play with my wife. She was into the narrative as well. Very good game. We're not going in? Coming in at number six is a surprise. Kicks Neo. In this game, all you're doing is drawing a line. It may not sound like much, but it's very fun to do. This is an arcade port on the PS1. There's enemies roaming around and you don't want them to touch the line that you're drawing until you fully connect that line. So you have to carefully take slices out of the screen. You eventually beat the stage once you get the enemy confined to a small enough portion of the screen. And for some reason, me and my wife enjoy doing this together. We take turns per stage because each stage goes by pretty fast. A few minutes at most. A lot of people will be turned off by the noise that the enemies make, but it's part of their pattern. By examining the way it moves around and the noises it makes, it helps you to time your slices so you can not be killed. There's power-ups in this game too, something that wasn't featured in a lot of the other arcade versions of Kicks. Some of them stop time, some of them allow you to shoot a laser and so forth. Me and my wife will probably continue to get this game out every few years and play it together. So let's do another honorable mention. Streets of Rage 2. This is a game that I probably enjoy a lot more than my wife, but she agrees to play it with me and she rather enjoys playing as the girl in the game and I play as one of the guys, so it works out pretty good. This is just a simple one to pick up and play. It's just punching and kicking and the graphics are beautiful and have held up over time. There are some points where one of us has to like stand off to the side while the other person finishes off the enemies so that we don't end up punching each other. Overall, it's a great two-player co-op experience. Number five is another PS1 game. It's called You Don't Know Jack. This is a comedy trivia game. The jokes you might hear during this section of the game may not be that funny to you, but if you play a full game with your partner, there's gonna be things that you laugh about. Here's one just for the kids. Which of the following characters would not be able to nurse her young? Jessica. Even though this game is very old, the questions are still very relevant. Before you get the question though, you have to pick a category. The three things that you pick from usually don't make any sense at all. You just don't know what kind of question that is going to get generated from those lines of text. Once you do get the question, it's always very challenging no matter how smart you are. There's a screw next to your player one or player two icon. You can use that screw to force the other player to answer a question. Gotta answer it, player two. Uh, no, the preacher's wife is more susceptible to Denzelitis. If you know the question is about a subject matter that your significant other does not know about, you can hit that screw button and screw them and they're forced to answer the question. If you fail in that attempt, you lose money. That's the thing you're playing for in this game is money. The guy who's reading off the questions is very funny. He went on to make many more You Don't Know Jack games. We have tried many of them out, but we think this first one is the best one. We are up to number four and that is... Super Bomberman. The mode that me and my wife play on this one is not the battle mode, we play normal mode, which is where you go through different stages and your goal is to destroy all the enemies on the screen. The deeper you go into the game, the more elaborate some of those enemies become. They got ones that take two bombs to destroy, they got ones that eat your bombs. It's very fun to lay these bombs down and blow up these cute little enemies. You can also blow each other up, but we tend to stay f as far away from each other as possible. There's some power-ups here and there as well that make your bombs more powerful and stuff like that. It is not a very serious game at all, and that's probably why me and my wife like it. 
There's been other Bomberman games released on the Super Nintendo. I own five. Two were American releases and three were Japanese releases. We enjoy the first one the most. The second one doesn't even have a co-op normal mode. And the others introduce a lot of extra stuff that doesn't really make the game better in our opinion. But your mileage may vary. So let's go ahead and do the last honorable mention before we get into the top three. And this one's going to be... Super Mario Odyssey. For those who don't know about this game, it's a 3D Mario where you throw your hat at things and the hat can go inside enemies, which allows you to take control of them and move them around. It's just a gorgeous game to look at. The second player can actually play as the cap. They're limited, but they can move around and go into things. They can also gather up items for you. Anyway, th I mean, this game's just obviously a good game, and I think most people would enjoy the co-op mode. If you like these kind of lists, you may want to watch some of my other top 10 lists I have done. I've done one for the Sega Genesis. I've done one for the Sega Dreamcast. I've done one for the NES. I'll put a playlist in the description so you can go right to them. Now we're ready for number three, and that is Dr. Mario 64. My wife actually likes puzzle games more than anything else, but I don't play a lot of them with her, mainly because she destroys me. But I have grown to like Dr. Mario more than Tetris, more than Columns, and more than any other puzzle game. I just like the strategy of it. I can't really explain it. There's a bunch of viruses on both sides of the screen, and the first person to knock out each of those viruses wins that match. It gets very fast and it gets almost impossible to put the pills in the right places. It's basically color matching done under extreme stress. And we both love it. Yeah. Coming in at number two is... It Takes Two. This was designed from the ground up to be a couple's game, and it really fulfills that goal. The graphics are astounding. I'm playing the PS4 version here. It causes my PS4 to make a lot of fan noise. It splits the graphics up into two different screens, so that's probably why it does that. In this game, you and your wife are about to go through a divorce, but some things happen. You are being forced to re-examine your relationship through the gameplay. You're given these different powers throughout the game, and you have to utilize them together in a way that solves some of the puzzles that you encounter. The only thing I think this game was missing was some more collectibles hidden throughout the stages. That would have made it the perfect game. I wouldn't recommend playing this game with somebody that you just started dating or something because it goes into some really heavy love relationship stuff. Unless you're ready for that, uh, I would play something else instead. That brings us to number one, and there is actually a three-way tie for number one. These three games are in the same series. They are Bubble Bobble for the NES, Bubble Bobble for the Master System, and Bubble Bobble Plus that was a digital download on the Wii. These three games have a lot of differences between them, but the core concept of enclosing your enemies in bubbles and then popping them is very fun, especially with two-player co-op. There is some competition between the two players though because you have to pick up these fruit that get left behind. There's also little power-ups that appear in various places within the stages. The NES version is the one we play the most, but the Sega Master System version has some really cool differences. There's more power-ups in it and secrets in it. This was not released in the US, so you're seeing us play the European version on an American Master System, so it's not running at the right speed, but we don't notice. It plays just fun. Now Bubble Bobble Plus does a lot of different things with the formula. It has a much cleaner look. There's been other modern attempts of revising the Bubble Bobble formula, but this one did it the best in our opinion. All three games have a cutesy atmosphere, remarkable music, great co-op gameplay that also has a bit of competitiveness to it. Perfect for me and my wife. So that's it for the list. I would love to hear what some of your relationship-centered video games are. Let me know in the comments. 
In the meantime, you can watch this video here where I talk about my top 10 favorite Sega Dreamcast games. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody. <laughs>